Oh, snap. I'm not on. Here I am. Here I am. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? We are live. <clears throat> Whoa, got a little cough here. How's everybody doing? In the chat, hey, listen, if you have not hit that like button, smash that like button right now for me. Do me a favor, smash that like button. Smash that like button. Wow, we got some people already in the chat with some dope, dope, dope comments. I've been saying this for years. When people at resources, they give you information. The mentor cares about the whole person and ensures they have adequate support. Very true. And I like this comment. We're going to touch on this. They shouldn't even be resources because much of what they speak on goes against the Lord's ways and law. We'll touch on that. We'll touch on that. <laughs> but that's a very good point. Ms. Lackey's in the house. What's going on, sis? What up? All right. What up? What up, sis? Hey, Valerie. How you doing? Uh, Ms. Ms. Lackey is welcoming everybody in the chat. Uh, we have a junior easy. Uh, WSG chatters. Not sure what that means, but I'm pretty sure it's positive. Uh, thanks for the comment. Um, who else we got? Who else? We got? Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday, Harrison. Hey, happy Sunday, sister. How you doing today? All right. I uh, don't say you're bad, Valerie. Real talk, 87. I was watching your video that you just released. I, I was watching it, but then I had to start this. So I'm going to go back. I pause it and I'm about to go back to it. All right. Listen, this is unscripted. All right, I do have some scriptures later, later but this is absolutely unscripted. Um, I, I'm going to go off the top of the dome as if I was freestyling. I just don't rap. But I wanted to talk a little bit. Hey, Knock Free Living, what's going on, sis? If you have not subscribed to uh, uh, Knock Free's channel, do me a favor. Open up another tab. I want you to search Knock Free Living, all right, and subscribe to her channel because she has some dope content. Dope. Dope content. All right. So let's get into the topic, right? You saw the thumbnail. You saw the title. You was like, here Dre go again, trying to bash these men. Now, trust me, I'm not here to bash anybody. I really am not. What I am going to do is expose the, the, the elementary thinking of the men who follow them. Okay. I'm going to expose the elementary thinking of the men who follow them because in of itself, I don't have a problem with any of them. In fact, um, they're, they're doing exactly what they're doing, and they're successful at it. So um, they, they put in the work, and based on the work that they put in, they deserve to be where they are, okay? However, we have to be able to discern and differentiate, is somebody good for me, or are they bad for me? Or is some of the things they tell me good? Or some of the things they tell me are bad. Because now, again, um, I posted a video almost a year ago about Kevin Samuels, a short. And people are still commenting on it. And I'm realizing that these, these men that are commenting on these videos, they see these YouTubers as their literal mentor. So I wanted to, to just do this video and tell people, hey, just because people can give some good advice doesn't mean that they are great at mentoring. And um, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But I've noticed that I'm a little bright. Am I bright? Let me turn on my light. Hold on. <clears throat> Hopefully that'll balance out the light a little bit. I'm looking at myself and I'm like, yo, I'm pretty bright. I mean, I got the light of Christ in me, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about this, right? I'm going to talk about this, okay? Knowing the difference between somebody who's an actual mentor and somebody who's a resource. <sighs> YouTube has been exploding with people presenting information. And um, maybe it's just the algorithm touching me the way it has because I tend to, to, to be interested in this type of topic. But the YouTube algorithms, what's going on, Unbroken Sylvia? I mean, uh, Unbroken Sylvia Sunshine, thank you so much for being here. All right. Yes, they act like groupies. They act like groupies. And we're going to talk about all of that, all of that. JB Natural's in the house. I didn't even see her. Uh, she's here. What's up, sis? I didn't even see you. My, my, my apologies. I want to make sure I acknowledge you. If you have not done so, hit that like button right now and uh, hit the share button if you guys want. All right. So, um, so the, again, now, rightfully, I think there's a space now for people who really care about others to, to share information that could be helpful. But you know what tends to happen? The people who are disseminating the information will gain a followership of people who elevate these information givers to the point of godhood or lordship over their lives. They treat them as if they are their digital mentors and everything that this person says is gold. 
It's like canon. Like whatever it is that they say, it's got to be it. And I'm going to follow it to a T. And uh, I'm going to ride with them no matter what. To the point where if somebody like myself who thinks critically about everything, I think critically about everything. Uh, I speak out against something that somebody may say or disagree. Then you are the worst person in the world because you came against their lordship or their godship, right? So I'm hoping that some of these men will watch this and they can learn a little bit something about the difference of using YouTube as a resource instead of using YouTube as a source of mentoring, all right? So we're going to talk about that today. Unscripted, I'm just going to go from my heart and and what the information that I know. They say anything about their followers, uh, yeah, man. And the thing is, they, they, t they tend to fo blindly follow them. So man, no matter what they do or say, they will follow them. There's a, there's a, um, a guy recently who, um, I don't want to say exposed. I don't want to say his name either. I, honestly, I forgot his name. But he was exposed for saying on his live stream that he had a um, relationship with uh, a mother and her 16-year-old daughter. And then to justify himself, he said that 16 is the legal age of consent in the state that he's in. The man is older than I am. I'm 41. I'll be 42 in, in, in December. Older than me. Right. And he has a, and he has this, um, online, you know, business of doing videos and trying to improve people's life and make them millionaires. I'm like, there's men who would see him hear what he did and think, you know what, maybe I should do the same thing. If he did it, I should do it too. Understand this, know the difference between a resource and somebody who you can learn from as a mentor, okay? Including myself. We are not on YouTube to be your mentor. We were here on YouTube to give you information. I can't be your mentor, even though I would like to. But the reason why I can't is because I don't know who you are. A mentor should know who you are. Yeah, that's his name. A mentor should know who you are. So if you're on YouTube following somebody, and gleaning everything, gleaning from them, but then accepting everything that they say and everything that they do, you're treating them like they're a mentor. And then you follow everything that they say, follow everything that they do. You're treating them as a mentor. And this man don't know who you are. I say it like this, right? When you allow somebody to be your mentor, right? When you become somebody's mentee, you give them a carving knife. You give them a chisel and you give them a hammer. And by accepting them as a mentor, you give them permission to chisel out the areas in your life that you need to improve in. That means that for them to, to successfully do that, they have to know who you are. Kevin Samuels has no clue who you are. Fresh and Fit has no clue who you are, probably don't even care who you are. Hafiz, who I support, who I support, he has a mentoring business on the side, so he gets to know people, okay? But if you're only looking at his videos and hoping that you can be mentored by his videos, that's not his job. He's on YouTube to post videos and give you information. Even mediocre tutorials and reviews, shout out to him. Uh, he was uh, just diagnosed with a, a type of cancer that can be uh, treated, so I'm praying for you if you are watching this. You probably won't watch this, but even him. He's not your mentor, nor is it fair to put any of these men at that level of being your mentor. They don't know who you are. The reason why many of you guys want them to be a mentor is because they can't hold you accountable, really. They'll tell you what exactly you, you, you'll accept the information that they give you because it makes you feel good. They, they tell you the, they, they, in their videos, they tell you the things that make you feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing OK. But the people that you that really know you will tell you. Some of these areas in your life, you need to fix up. Coach Greg Adams, not your mentor. Regardless if he has coach in the front of his name, he's not your coach. He's not your life coach. He is not your mentor. Okay? And it's important. Yes, prayers for mediocre tutorials and reviews. Yes, please. Yeah, definitely pray for him. Um, they're not your mentors. Men, I, I get it. I understand that many of you, grew up or had to grow up without the guidance of a positive male influence 
to put you on the path to manhood. I get it. I get it. But you know what? There's places you can go to find actual mentors, men that know who you are, that know who you are. I'm one person. If anybody says, hey, you know, I would love for you to be my mentor. If I know who you are, I would gladly accept it. Right. But understand this. If I'm presenting you with information with videos, that's not me mentoring you. That's me giving you information that could help you. For me to be your mentor, I have to know who you are. And you have to give me permission to carve out the areas in your life that should not be there. That's what it means to be a mentor. Yes, everyone we see shouldn't be able to speak into our lives. Exactly. That's the difference between somebody who's a mentor and somebody who's a resource. We can get helpful information for almost anywhere. Anywhere. Even CNN and Fox News. They could give us, at times, right, some good information. I'm not about to align with everything that they say. Nor are they going to speak into my life. Your only goal is to give me information. You're like Your only um, objective subje- objective. If I'm watching your videos on YouTube, it's to give me information, all right? Not to mentor me and vice versa. Accountability is key. And you know what? Not free living. You, 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 your, your, your specialty is, is narcissism, all right? And maybe you could touch on this, sis, and I'll definitely watch that video, on the men who, instead of going to an actual experienced, seasoned man of God for mentorship, they would rather go on YouTube and and listen to these guys on YouTube and and treat them as if they're they they them treat them as if they are their mentors, right? I wonder if that is a trait that some narcissists have because it it, it causes them not to be exposed. Some people don't want to be exposed, so they don't want the accountability. They don't want to be told that they're doing things wrong, so. They'll go on Kevin Samuel's channel. Now, mind you, I'm saying these names, but I'm not coming against their work, what they what they're putting out there. Some of the stuff that they are putting out there, I think, is is not the best for the state of manhood. But they could they could present some valuable information, like uh, for instance, my mediocre story reviews. Right, paid off a three hundred thousand um, dollar mortgage in like a few years. That's information that would be helpful. Right. That's what, how did how did he do that? I, w- I would like to watch videos solely on how he did that because that information is helpful. Right. But I don't know how he lives per se for him, me to make him my mentor and ask him, please give me some life advice. Can't do it. Can't do it. I have mentors in my life. I have men that would speak into my life, and these men aren't yes men. Nor do I necessarily ride a, ride with them and and hang out with them. Okay. These men tell me exactly what I need to know, when I need to know, know it, and how I need to change things. And they have my permission, right? Because I handed them the carving knife. I handed them the chisel. I handed them the hammer so that they can carve out the areas in my life that does, that don't need to be there. People who can encourage me and mentor me in my marriage, my finances, in my spiritual walk with God. Some are able to do all three, Right? I'm looking for a mentor. I have somebody in mind, all right, but he's very busy, so he can mentor me with my my my, my physical. Like you know, I'm trying to. I'm turning 42, you know, so your boy has to, you know, try to, you know, things are starting to be a little soft in certain areas, you know. So I'm, I need to I need to tighten up a little bit. I need to tone up, right? You know, it's weird. You know, you got a a, a beautiful wife, and you don't want to be standing next to her and looking like the number 10, and you're the zero. You know what I'm saying? So I got I got to get right, you know. So I need a, a mentor that that would you know, mentor me with my health and, and, and they will literally have <laughs> permission to carve, carve my physical me, but we got to be wise with who we, um, not only, uh, me- uh, receive as mentors in our life, but also what type of information we're receiving. So, um, I know media took a tutorial and reviews has a good financial mind, all right? But I may not, and I'm gonna say, I say this, and not to knock him out. I may not necessarily take relationship advice from him because he hasn't shown or proven that he ha- he can be in a successful relationship. And mentors should be proven; they should be vetted, right? So I wouldn't accept a relationship advice from him. However, if he was to tell me, Dre, you need to be doing this and this and this for you to pay off your mortgage, I'm going to eat that up. I'm going to eat that up. Okay. 
What's going on? Welcome back. Welcome back. I read your comment earlier. Uh, uh, actually, and I shared it um, with everybody. That was a dope comment, by the way. So thank you for coming back. All right? So we have to be careful, right? And know the difference. I can accept information from this person. And if I can receive information, they are a resource. But if this person is going to mentor me, they have to know who I am, who I am. Another person who I respect is Hafiz. Hafiz have done a lot of work with uh, with men one on one. Um, they, they they charge for his services, but you know he knows who they are. He knows who they are, right? And um and, and one thing I, I like about Hafiz is that he's willing to speak out, speak speak out against men for being, frankly, stupid in their thinking. Right? You call him out. You call him out. It is what it is. It's not. It's not. He's not out there trying to bash women, but he wants. People to have decent relationships. Um, I will say this: I, I don't know much about his relationship life, so um, I can I can receive information from him and see what he he says, and then I'll cross reference it with information that I've received from other people and from the books that I've read. Um, but at, at the end of the day, one thing I, I know I, I believe about Hafiz is that he has a dope heart. He has a good heart, and he really wants to be a helpful resource resource to people. Not everybody is a mentor. And if you, and if they're posting videos on YouTube, they're not your digital YouTube mentor. They're not. Where can you find these mentors, and how do you know that they are not frauds? Good question. All right. Since you ask it now, because I was going to segue into that, but you need easy. Since you asked that, right? Um, how do you find a good mentor? First off, you're not going to find a good mentor on YouTube unless they live in your area or they have access to you. If the person that you want to be a mentor doesn't have access to you, then they really shouldn't be your mentor. They shouldn't. Um, there are people who have mentor businesses and they will receive anybody as long as they can pay. But understand this, somebody who is a real mentor will say, I do not have the time to give you the attention that you need because I'm already mentoring five people in, 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 in my life. I can only mentor five people. A good mentor has limits, and they'll tell you, I cannot mentor you because I may not have the time to. We live in an age of the content creator's mentors. It's like now Oprah was in the 80s. <laughs> Facts. And everybody was eating up Oprah back in the day. Everybody was eating up Oprah back in the day. I had mentors, and they used to check up on us and make sure we had food, clothes, etc. A mentor cares about the whole person and makes and, and making sure they are safe and set up for success. That's another thing. Uh, and I was going to touch on that also. The mentor actually cares about your well-being. A mentor doesn't tell you what to think. A mentor teaches you how to think. Understand the difference. The mentors I have had had never asked anything from me but effort. They guided me and said, oh, that's pretty loud. Let me turn it down. They guided me and simply asked that I apply myself and give it my all. <sighs> Come on. Come on. That's good stuff. If you have a mentor that that operates in that way, then you found somebody that's that's golden. You found a good, valuable mentor to, to, to learn from. But first they have time to. Exactly. Mentors have limits. We live in an age where people are caring about the bag. Yes, and 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 what they'll do is they'll they'll again, some of the, the people that I mentor that, that I mentioned have this type of business. And I'm not trying to like knock them for, for, for their business. You guys can do whatever you want. But if you are looking for a mentor, somebody that can actually help you with your being, you just got to be cautious because if, if you're joining a Zoom call of somebody that you respect that's looking to mentor you and there's like 50 other men in that, that Zoom call, they probably don't have the capacity to, to focus on you when you need to get the, the focus. Mentors have limits, Okay. And it's not about how much money you have. Like, they have limits. All right? Thank you so much, The Right Way. Thank you so much for joining the conversation. Okay? Um, two, the area that you want them to mentor you, they are successful in. Okay? I would refrain from looking for one person to mentor you in every single area of your life. Okay? Don't do it. Don't do it. If you desire to have a good, strong marriage, you're going to find a seasoned husband who can help speak into your marriage, speak into you, and help you improve as a husband. 
if you are trying to to, to, to uh, gain wealth through entrepreneurship, right, you're going to find somebody who's not looking to, you know, um, recruit you for some pyramid scheme. <laughs> you're going to find somebody who has actually started reputable businesses and that they're earning passive income so that they can do live life and, and still earn an income. All right. If you would like to, to, to be mentored in growing in your faith in God, you're going to probably sit under an, a seasoned pastor or a seasoned biblical teacher who can teach you those things, right? Do not put all your eggs in one basket. And I think people tend to do that. And on YouTube, it's very easy to do so. Very easy to do so. We like what so-and-so said. He affirmed how I was feeling. So I'm going to align with him and give him my blind loyalty. Yep. And if anybody says anything against this man, I am going to curse them out and call them names and tell them they have a bell pepper nose. That's my favorite insult. I got to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> I never heard that before. I'm going to use that for the rest of my life. All right. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that these channels in itself isn't bad. But there is a comment that somebody said. And I wanted to touch on that comment real quick. Uh, I think uh, I can't scroll up that that far, but um, I think it was the lonely Mad Mandalore, right? Who who touched on on um, the qualities of of a person who's actually a mentor, and they should be following God or and following others. Also, you know, a person may be a good mentor if they themselves have mentors. All right? Could I ask? Let me put this in. Could I ask? What is a seasoned husband or what does the term mean? So again, I, I'm a firm believer that maturity is not based on age or years. Maturity is based on mindset. Um, but when I say seasoned, I'm talking about um, somebody, a man who's been married for a while, who has a successful marriage, who is is um, running his home well, who's not running, but um, leading his home well, leading his children well. His children have respect and love for him. His wife has respect and love for him as well. Um, and it's been a, a long track record of it. We have to look for mentors that have a track record of success in the areas that we desire to grow in. So um, I've been married less than a year, right? And, and so the reason why I speak about marriage, because I've been married once before and I went to um, college and got my master's in marriage and family counseling to help couples. So when I speak about marriage, I speak from a place of, of knowledge from first experience and second, um, book knowledge, school knowledge. Right. But, um, uh, I can give people tools. Right. But when we're looking for somebody who, um, is like, I can offer counseling services. Um, but when it comes to a, a marriage mentor, I would probably encourage them to find somebody, whether in their church, in their family, um, a man who has been a, a, a faithful, successful husband, to his wife and a, a faithful father to his children. And that I would define as somebody who is seasoned, somebody who has a track record of success as a husband. And when I mean success, I'm not saying they did everything perfectly. I'm saying that they worked hard to make sure that everything worked out for his family. Some of these mentors being been charging you so much money and you don't even get what you're paying for. Protect your energy and do not allow yourself to be taken advantage of. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, bro, I'm glad that you got married again and living. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, I think the, emer uh, the emergence of social media shifted the mindset of many. I, yeah. So, and the thing is, YouTube is also a resource, right? We learn a lot of things through YouTube. We already answered that. And I think um, the right way said agreed. We learn a lot, a lot of things through YouTube. So I, I appreciate YouTube because there's some things that I can do now I didn't know how to do before YouTube. And, and if I did want to learn how to do it, I would probably have to pay somebody to teach me how to do it, right? Um, like I didn't have a, I was talking to my son um, yesterday, my oldest son, he's 23, married, you know, giving me grandchildren, all that stuff, right? But he is able, he, he has learned the skill that I did not teach him. And I feel bad that I didn't teach him. But I couldn't teach him because I didn't have the skill, nor that I have the, the resources to, to work on that skill, right? This My son is building houses. He's building houses, right? 
I can't mentor him in how to build a house, right? And hopefully one day, my son can mentor me in how to build homes. But he's building homes. He's he's like tearing down walls and putting them up and doing electrical work. He's not licensed yet. And I told him, yo, get every single license you can because that's that's where money is, right? And what I what what, what I think is amazing, and and this is I got emotional thinking about this yesterday. I was driving I'm home from a job, and um, I couldn't teach my my son right how to build a home. I couldn't. I couldn't right. I, I purchased this home. Uh, the house I, I live in, I, I purchased. I got a mortgage for it, right? But my son is developing the skills to actually build a house for his family. And he, he has mentors up in where he lives that's teaching him how to do that. I don't have the skills to build a house for my family. All right, so I work hard to earn money to buy a house. My son will be in a position to not just buy a home for his family, but build it. Come on. Come on. When it comes to these mentors, one issue I keep seeing from both men and women is also the hard mentality and the, the herd mentality and immaturity. That herd mentality could be extremely toxic because toxic thinking is, 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 um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, when you, why, yo, you ever talk and you just start, start contagious. That's what I'm learning. Contagious, right? It's contagious, right? And here's what tends to happen. You have people with shared, um, what's going on, grand and mat, motivate, glad you can make it. All right. You know what happens with the herd immunity thing? Um, uh, misery loves company. So what happens is when people have a shared experience, they get together and start developing toxic ideas. And they start teaching toxic ideas with other people who had the similar experience. So you've been hurt by a woman. All women are bad. Yeah, all women are bad. You know what we should do? What we should do? We should go our own way. You know what? We should start an organization called Men Going Their Own Way. Let's call it Mitgal. Yeah. All right. Then you have the other, <laughs> other people, right? You know what? I'm tired of women treating us like we're nobody. You know, these men paying all this money for their first dates and all that stuff. It's like they're in the matrix. Like they, like they want to take the red blue pill. Well, you know what? Let's take the red pill. You know what? Let's take the red pill. You know what? We're going to be red pill. All right. So you have these uh, feminists. You know, I'm tired of, uh, it starts off good. I'm tired of men getting paid more than us. You know what we should do? We should fight for our rights. We should be paid equal. Yeah, we should get paid equal. All right. Now that we're getting paid equal, I don't want no man telling me what to do. No, they shouldn't tell us what to do. You know what? Let's take over the world. All right. You know what? We don't need men anymore. No, we don't need men anymore. Right. And let's have babies. Well, you need a husband for that. No, we don't. You need a man for that. No, I don't. Not only do I need don't need a man for that, they can get me pregnant and they're gonna be paying for the baby for the rest of the baby's life or whatever. Like it's it's crazy. It's crazy. And then people start developing the same kind of mindset and it's become contagious. So that herd mentality definitely is an issue. When it comes to these mentors, uh yeah, so definitely an issue. Definitely an issue. These guys are only creating greater divide amongst black men and women. Yeah. Now, some are trying to, 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 to bring it together. I don't, and I'm going to say this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to support him. I don't want to say that Hafiz falls in that category, okay? Uh, I think he was for a hot minute, but then he, he gathered himself together. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, he, he was there, all right? Uh, I realized that the herd mentality with the manosphere is a circle jerk of regurgitated ideas. Yeah, and there's nothing growing. So it's not really much of growth. It's more of you don't need a woman uh, and uh, you need to find women that are submissive, that are beautiful. And, and they, so it's, it's all the same talking points, nothing nothing of, of truth. That's why I said you got to identify the difference between a resource and mentors because they may have valuable information to share, but not everything about them is 100%. So we got to be careful of that. We got to be careful of that. I'm trying to get to the comments, so please uh, bear with me. Uh, that's the problem. Knowledge is free. Not now. Knowledge is expensive. Yeah, people are monetizing knowledge. When it comes to these mental, I, I already read that. Uh, what's good? These guys are creating greater divide. I realize the herd mentality. Uh, agreed. Um, what's going on? D uh, DAC speaks. I saw a lot of that as well. Let me close that out. Uh, Target, thank you so much for the the comment and the emojis. What else? I realize that. Uh, um, 
Facts. These movements have good intentions, but eventually they become so toxic and cause people to become stagnant. Yes, and then they they wallow within that that space. So now everything that 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 happens within that space has become centered around one negative idea, one negative concept. Instead of instead of changing, instead of changing, instead of growth, right? Which is why I support Hafiz because he he'd be calling men out. I'd be calling men out. And I think that's what men need. If you are if if you are on YouTube looking for a mentor, that probably means that you don't want a man in your life to tell you exactly what you need to change in your life. All right. One thing I notice about good mentors is their ability to identify and admit their own shortcomings. And they work on those shortcomings constantly. And then they're able to share those shortcomings and share how they're working on those shortcomings. Hmm. Good stuff. Um, I agree. Hafiz seems all right. All right. Yeah, he does. He does. He's he's grown a lot. He's grown a lot. He definitely has grown a lot. These men are not intellectual professionals. Very toxic. And and so what, what's crazy is that what what we tend to do is, and I wanted to touch on this also. We tend to only go based off of our own experiences, right? And then we 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 act like our own experiences is the same that same experience that everybody else is experiencing, even though there's many that can be, but not everybody's experiencing the same thing. So um, we start putting material out there based on our own experiences, coming up with ideas on how to fix it that we haven't even proven ourselves, and we want other people to buy into it, and it's crazy. We need to be steadily growing, not arguing. Preach. Preach. Could these men be puppets, hire plants for our culture? Oh, I messed up. Could they be? Could they be? Mm. AB, do you realize that, and I'm pretty sure you do, because you, you already said it. Our culture has had hired puppets promoting toxicity for the better part of 40 years. Since hip hop has become mainstream, they make sure to keep the negative content completely accessible to the culture. Listen to the radio today. I saw a meme recently. Listen to the radio today. Listen to hip hop music. It's completely weaponized. Completely weaponized. You have women talking about dragging other women. You have men promoting shooting other men. You have men talking negatively about women. You have women treating men like they're nothing but a, a tool to use. Puppets have been planted in our society and our culture for decades now. And you know what we tend to do? Eat it up. Anyway, change needs to happen. Change needs to happen. So could these be, men be puppets? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yo, Rebecca Barrett's in the house. What's going on? Yo, if you guys have not subscribed to this sister's channel, go there now. She did a, a Q&A with her husband. Dope, dope, dope conversation that they had. Um, pretty revealing, too. Like, they didn't hold any punches. They were saying some things. That I was like, <laughs> I was like, yo, yeah, man. So please go over there and check them out. I want to get to, to more of these comments. Uh, uh, that's real. You look at a video and then take no action, but a real life mentor will make you handle business. Exactly. Exactly. They will make you, make you, like make you. And again, you've given them the permission to do that. So yeah. I realized how toxic the space was when I was labeled a simp for saying we got to build better relationships with one another. Yeah. Yeah. So you looking to improve yourself and relationships with other makes you a simp. Definitely a toxic space. Definitely a toxic space. All right. Again, I'm not, we're going in a separate uh, area. Just remember to use the information you get from YouTube as information resource, informational resource. Don't let these men mentor you unless they have a genuine relationship with who you are. 
Okay. What else? Who, we, who else we got? I think, I think another issue about some of these mentors on YouTube is also arrogance. And the ones I've seen, they have the experience, but they aren't married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mentors hold you accountable. I think another issue. I we just you just read that one. All right. Love the topic. Uh watching from Kenya. Hey! Yo, what's going on? Kenya's one of the countries I want to visit. Hopefully, I get a chance to go out there. And if I do, please stay in touch because I would love to connect. Kenya is definitely one of the, the countries, my like my bucket list countries. Uh, not just to visit. There's certain countries that I want to um visit and certain countries that I want to like plant roots in, like do you know, like build at, you know. So uh, Kenya, Kenya is one of those countries. Kenya, Ghana, um, uh, there's um, Philippines, a couple of other countries. I really would like to just have re like genuine relationships with the people there. All right, who else? Uh, whereas Jordan Peterson has uh, known his wife for 50 years. And here's the thing about Jordan Peterson. Uh, the, when the man speaks, it's extremely objective, right? He can come from a place of experience, but what he's doing with that 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 place of experience is um, he's not saying everybody is this way because I've experienced this. He's saying there's some things that I've experienced and some actions I took to help me with that experience, and maybe this can help you, right? And he he tends to call out the toxicity in thought among all coaches and people groups. And with Jordan Peterson, everybody can get it. Everybody can get it, right? He's no respect of man. Like you, you, you think stupidly. He's about to tell you, yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> so I respect Jordan Peterson for that. Be wary of people who depend on insecurity for profits. Watch how they frame the insecurities, especially if it per uh, if it's perpetual hopelessness. Yes, if it's always, you know, um, down and always putting somebody else down in order to help you feel better. Be cautious of that. Be cautious of that. That is so true. We can all have a bad experience with the same thing, but the nuance can vary widely. So our personal solution may not be the best for everyone else. Exactly. Now we can share that, but we can't say, well, you need to do it like this because this has been proven to work. It has been proven to work for you. Maybe not everybody. So we have to be cautious, right? We got to be cautious. All right. Yeah, Jordan Peterson is a bright dude. Uh, grind and motivate 100%. But I hope I, let me see. Let me go back up. Let me see if he if I missed something. No, I don't think I think I got everything. All right, all right, cool, cool. Uh, what else? What else? Great info. Thank you so much, sister. Um, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you. I stopped listening. I stopped listening to hip hop. It's weaponized against black men. Yeah, it's weaponized against black people. You know, you know um, L.O. Cool J has been married to his wife since the 80s. People didn't really know he was married until the 2000s. And it's because in, in, in most cases, in most music, right, artists should be accessible to the listeners, right? But we don't we don't see rappers talking about their wives or, 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 or promoting healthy families. It's just not profitable. But at the end of the day, it's profitable. Here's the thing. When we promote positivity in our communities and people buy into that, the whole community rises, right? The whole community rises. So we think that we think that negativity in hip hop is more profitable. It's only profitable to the person who's producing the negativity. It's profitable to the record companies. We know it's profitable to our communities Positivity. Positivity is profitable for our communities. That will elevate up uh, our communities. That will cause marriages to be successful. That will cause marriages to be successful to the point where we won't need YouTubers to tell us how to live. Also, you don't really know who these mentors are in real life. Most lie and exaggerate about themselves. Exactly. Like YouTube is one of those places that you can hide behind a camera, lie, 
about who you are and what you do and get successful, right? It's like, when it, it really is a place where you can literally make, fake it until you make it. You can fake it until you make it. There's nobody's really calling you out and saying, hey, let me let me go and investigate their, your life. And the ones who are investigating the person's life, they, they, they're not taking the, the blue pill. <laughs> they're, they're the ones not taking the blue pill. All right, so let's go back to the comments. Uh, I love this topic. Hold up. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rebecca Barrett. I'm glad you're here, sis. I'm glad you're here. All right. This has always been my issue. We have too many men telling us how not to get married, but they have never been married. So you know what, though, bro? They've been successful. <laughs> and not getting married. <laughs> so they want you not to be happy like they are not happy. I get it. I get it. They're, they're successful at not being happy. So they're trying to promote people not getting married in order to not be happy. So they could, I get it. It makes, it all makes, <laughs> it makes sense now. I get it. Right now. <laughs> marriage takes work, commitment, growth, and having a set goal. Exactly. Exactly. I love this topic. This is a dope creator, bro. Uh, thank you so much. And we definitely need your perspective in the community. I appreciate that, man. I'm hoping to, to, to be a resource, right? And then mentor people that I can actually mentor. Honestly, this every year I have an opportunity to mentor 25 to 30 young people. Every year as a teacher, right? And then there are people in my life that I mentor outside of that. But I can't like, you know, it's difficult to make myself available to everybody. So I share information on here as a resource to people who can use it. The people on YouTube who are giving you information has to be have to be used as resources, not as mentors. Nobody should should all right. Oh uh, wait, just jumping. Uh yep. I'm a man that has always valued marriage. I had to stop watching red pill content because most of their messages is you're a simp by wanting marriage. The problem with this is the issue really isn't at its core marriage. The reason why most of the men in the red pill and in the manosphere space, the reason why they're there is because they chose wrongly. They didn't know how to choose a wife. They chose a woman who was probably a baddie. And it was like, I want to marry her. And then they got their heart broken. Preemptive strike is always the best, right? Be proactive. Identify what a good wife is first and then go looking for that. Stop looking for the Instagram model, the Instagram baddie, and trying to wife them. It may not work all the time. It may not work most of the time. So the reason why they're in that space is because they were themselves were delusional and they traded one delusional thought for another. So, yeah. I'm going to be called a simp because I said that, but it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. All right. Uh, your analysis, uh, your analysis and thoughts on the roommate podcast. Um, real quick, Craig, and thank you so much for asking the question. Um, I followed them when they were like very, very small. Well, they weren't that small. I think I followed them when they had like 50,000 subscribers. And um, I like their content. I saw two young men fresh out of college having honest dialogue about life as young men. But then I started to see a shift where they were presenting themselves as experts in the area of manhood. And I was like, wait a minute, these, these, these men barely going through puberty and they're telling other men how to be men. So I started watching for a little bit more. And then I started to see some, a shift in behaviors and attitudes. And I had to unsubscribe from the channel because I was like, yeah, this isn't, this is no longer about two young men just having honest dialogue as young men. It started to go into a, a very weird space of promoting and spreading sort of like this toxic man mindset of, of what manhood is all about. But recently, I guess my algorithm started to, to push more of Hafiz's videos toward me. And I started to think, I started to watch them again. And I started to see how he's starting to now level off his thinking so that it's more balanced. And it's not about um, targeting women and how inadequate they are. But now it's about addressing the inadequacies about of, of everybody so that they themselves can improve. So where I am right now, presently with the Roommates Podcast is that they 
uh, they tend they, they they are in a in a balanced space, and I'm hoping that they stay there and grow there. I do hope that they tend to, to promote a little bit more of their faith because I know they both they both are believers, and, and earlier in their in their YouTube journey, they talked about faith a lot, but it seems like um, they they haven't talked about that a lot. And honestly, I thought that Hafiz sort of left the faith until I saw a uh, Ruslan's video uh, interviewing him. Uh, so I think um, uh, promoting that a little bit more maybe better. Um, uh, I, I, I've been asked to be a mentor and there are some, uh, uh, young people and, um, young men that I do mentor. Yes. All right. So hold on. I'm going to go back. I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, this channel is, uh, thank you so much. Um, people from all walks of life coming together and having good conversations. And that's the key. And even if we disagree, I welcome disagreements because first I grow with people who don't agree with me. I tend to grow my thinking, uh, grow my thoughts. Oh, Rebecca Barrett, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. My my, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, but um, yeah, that good conversations is how people grow, right? Meaningful conversations, courageous conversations, um, us finding um spaces that we don't necessarily agree with, and hear their point of view, hear their perspective. That's how we grow. That's that's how we grow. Um, or they say, oh, be a bachelor, don't get married, it's slavery. I don't know one man who has a healthy marriage that thinks it's slavery. <laughs> I just don't. I haven't, yeah, I just don't. Yeah. Uh, let me scroll down. Uh, positivity. Yes, that's what we're promoting here, positivity. What else do we have? I stopped listening eight years ago, literally talking about harming. Uh, I stopped listening to hip hop eight years ago because they literally talk about harming people, using drugs and taking people's lives. Yeah. Like, and the thing is, if you look at every other genre of music, what other genre of music where that, that what he just said there, that's the center of the music's genre. We're the only ones. I gave these YouTube mentors a listen because I wanted to be the best wife I could be for my husband. And one advice was to be quiet. I asked my husband this and he said, no, I don't want that. There's not one husband out there that want their wife, a good husband, that want their wife to be quiet because they see their wife as a valuable part of his life and that as a trusted source to be able to tell him what he needs to hear when he needs to hear it. Yeah. See, again, um, they, the people, people, in, the, in these spaces tell women that they need to be submissive. And they think that that submissiveness is defined as a woman being quiet, silent, not giving pushback, and making sure that their husband has peace, right? Understand this. If I'm about to make a bad decision and my wife says, oh, Dre, this may not be the wise decision. If I don't make that decision and it works out, pff, I'll be at peace. Like, so we gotta, we gotta, again, Take the information. If it's positive, try to utilize it. If it's negative, throw it out. I don't think that we should be taking marriage advice from men that's been divorced several times over that's not trying to improve relationships. If they're telling you, I've been divorced twice because I had two toxic marriages. And you know what? Men are better off not being married. They are speaking from a broken place. They need healing. <laughs> not to be on YouTube. Telling people not to get married. That's what they need. So, yeah. So I, I'm glad that your husband was wise enough to say, no, I don't want that. All right. Uh, that's true. People like about uh, people like about themselves all the time on YouTube and get paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and another, thank you so much for the green tea. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I uh, stopping by to show love and support. Thank you so much. Uh, cooking with, uh, Q, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Uh, green, uh, green, bro. Exactly, bro. You get called a simp for wanting marriage and you get called it for defending black women. Make it make sense. Now, here's the thing about um, a, per, a, a man's strength, right? Think about what it takes for a man to get married. You think a, way, a weak man is willing to take on another human being, commit to protecting them, commit to leading them, commit to guiding them, commit to, to providing for them. You think that that makes a weak person? It, like, So the men in that space are broken. 
And the reason why they talk that way is because they're broken and they need healing. They need healing. When going down the rabbit hole, I heard quite few remind the audience that this is entertainment at the end of the day. So many know they are profiting off of dysfunction. They know it. And that's the scary part. What level of narcissism is that? Knock free life. I need you to speak on that. <laughs> they know they're giving you poison. They say it's entertainment. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Valerie. Trying to be clean. All right? Yeah. They don't know the math. The formula of fulfilling relationships is certified professional relationship expert is what these men seek. Yes. They need. Yo, I said the same thing. Many of these dudes looking for baddies. I know dudes got that impregnated women based on them looking good. And then they get mad at the fact that they want to keep the baby. Again, so the issue isn't that the woman is pregnant. The issue is that you didn't practice self-control and had sex with her. Therefore, she got pregnant. <laughs> like, so it's toxic thinking. It's always somebody else's fault in these type of spaces, right? So again, resources, mentors, know the difference. Know the difference. Which is why I love this topic of knowing the difference between a mentor and a resource. Yes, the men, these men, and, not, and it's not just exclusive to, to these uh, four or five channels that I, I highlighted in the, in the thumbnail. Um, there's a lot more channels out there, even, even um, uh, content that are out there that's targeting women. There's a lot of content out there, right? There's some, I should do a one on, on women too, because there are a couple of uh, female YouTubers that I've been watching that, that I even at one time subscribed to and I had to like, yo, this is crazy, that are on the same plane, in that same vein thinking. So maybe I'll, I'll do that too, but I'm just trying to, to do this in a way that's um, not trying to promote negativity or trying to get at people because I'm really not trying to get at people. I do want people who are watching YouTube, who's looking for information to understand that the reason why we watch YouTube is to get information. That's it. That's it. And, uh, advice for the group. Take advice and mentorship from people that are living the life you want. Great stream, Andre. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And that's good advice, so take it, all right? I think many men go to those types of YouTubers looking for help to get the right woman. Little do men know they are trying to keep you away from not only what you want, but keeping you from being a man. Yes. Yes. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean this. <laughs> it's cool, sis. All right? Uh, money in the chat. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the, the super chatters. Uh, that's a fact, Ruth. Um, hold on. Hold on. Let me get back to that. And being a responsible, accountable man and stop being uh, women for the, uh, seeing women as the problem, for the problem we have like Adam did Eve. That's why I stopped watching those uh, YouTubers and the fresh and fit thing with I've been preached. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that was a, a, another thing. And, I, you know, I did that video um, pseudo, about pseudo manhood. Um, and again, use them as resources, all right? Period. I fully agree with Rebecca. Take advice and mentorship from those living the life you're trying to, and that's right. You know you can take advice from, un, you know you can't take advice from unmarried men if you want to be married. True, <laughs> true, all right? You know, unless they're like saying, listen, here's what I did that caused my divorce. Don't do the same thing I did. That's good advice. Generally, we don't have like a lot of people on um, YouTube saying, hey, I'm a divorced man. And you know what? These are the things that I did to help with the divorce. Don't do these things. I'll listen to that person. I probably would. Uh, this is, Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, bro. I'm, I'm like catching up to the, <laughs> to the comments. Uh, I agree. Take advice. Uh, we just read that. Eat the meat and spit out the bones. Yes, Rebecca. Eat the meat and spit out the bones. Where are, where are we? I'm trying to trying to make sure. 
Even though I've never been married, but my mom has, my stepdad is broken now. Oh. Yeah. Also, don't even think to mention to them guys in a relationship or marrying a single mom. I'm in that position now, and I mentioned to my coworker regrettably and took his advice and almost um, ruined it for me. So um, definitely th think wisely as you get into a relationship with anybody. But if you're in a position, if you're in a place where <clears throat> you're not ready to be a parent figure for somebody else, for another child that's not yours, don't think about getting into a relationship with somebody who's a single mother. Um, ideally, most people don't want to be married to somebody who already has kids if they themselves don't have kids. That's a preference that I can't really knock. But it's one of those things where you, you could potentially miss out on somebody who is amazing simply because they made a mistake and had a child out of wedlock. And, or they, they marry somebody, had a child and that person left them. You could possibly miss out on somebody extremely special in your life simply because, simply because a lot of the men who have dated single mothers in the past have been burnt by single mothers. And now they're telling you don't date a single mom because you're going to get burnt too. That's toxic thinking. That's creating a very negative herd mentality. Now, you know, again, most people who don't have kids may not seek out somebody who has kids. And I don't know any person who just goes out. I'm not going to lie. I was like that. I thought for a while, let me let me just talk to people who have children because I have kids and they may relate to, um, you know, what I go through. But then I realized, you know, no, because I would have missed out on somebody amazing if I continued thinking that way. Sometimes we got to switch it up. But again, that's my experience. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I've been good, bro. I'm doing well. If that's if that, if that was for me, I'm doing well. All right. So I'm trying to make sure I get as many. Brother, uh, they know solution, but they don't want, they know the solution, but they don't want to say because they will lose money and subscribers. But we know the solution. And if we want, I'll say it for you. <laughs> Facts. Facts. You know, here's the thing about it. Somebody who, who's a good mentor, who's a good counselor, who's a good coach. Good mentors, counselors, and coaches work to put themselves out of business. A good counselor will teach you uh, the skills you need so that you no longer need that counselor anymore. A good mentor will teach you the skills that you need so that you no longer need that mentor anymore. A good coach well, coaches you always need because you need, yeah, you need always could use a second set of eyes or whatever. But even then, a good coach would coach you to the point where you don't need that coach for that specific skill anymore. Okay, that's how it is. And if and if you and if you find a mentor, a counselor, or a coach that is looking to 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 improve you to the point where you no longer need them anymore, you found somebody that has a good heart for mentorship. And that's facts. That's that's canon. You guys can take that and run with it. I don't think I mentioned you guys. Okay, good. All right, hold on. Uh, I'm trying to... All right. The origin of hip-hop changed, and it had uh, a powerful meaning from our ancestry. KRS-1 was an example, so music was food for your soul, and now it's gone. Red pill man plus hip-hop equals a poisonous culture. Did I read that right? Yo, I read emojis. <laughs> I read emojis. Yeah, yeah, I feel you, though. You're right. And again... That's us thinking critically about it because I love hip hop music. Love hip hop music. I grew up on it. But I gotta, I gotta, I gotta call out the the stuff that really isn't helpful for our communities. It is what it is. Remain celibate and discipline yourself and repent. The solution, but bro, that doesn't make money. You're not gonna get super chatters with that. You're not, you're not, you're not gonna get people joining your channel, subscribing with that kind of information. All right. People strive off of negativity, and it's sad. It's sad. Uh, by the way, still hoping for your help and what I should. Yeah, I'm, I, I got you. I got I, you. You wrote a lot. I want to make sure I, I could dedicate time to, to, to answering that question. All right, definitely. They focus on Instagram models instead of modest women. 
And the thing is, they don't even understand the difference, many of them, because or, or, or what a, a woman is, right? Um, they, they, they think that the Instagram baddie will make them look good. And men who are looking for a trophy wife going to Instagram will find exactly what they're looking for, a trophy wife. The problem is this. If you don't keep that trophy polished, the trophy is going to want to leave and find somebody else that will polish them. Stop looking for a trophy wife. Go to Proverbs 31. Listen to that mother speaking to her son about what makes a woman virtuous. All right. <laughs> and then use that as the, the metric of how you judge whether or not a woman's going to be a good wife or not. Hold on. These dudes date. Exactly. These dudes date women based off looks instead of pursuing a partner with integrity, goals, ambition, self-love, values, and actual morals. Then they complain when the woman is evil. Then it's the woman's fault. And then they join the red pill community in the manosphere and be... You know, he man women haters from uh, what's that show? The little scoundrels or little rascals. Yeah, little rascals. <laughs> the scoundrels. All right. Um, uh, focus on the Instagram. Well, oh, the man who dis the man who despises himself tries to gain self esteem from sexual adventures, which can't be done because sex is not the cause, but an effect and an expression of a man's sense of his own value. I like that. I like that quote. Did you did did you create that quote? If you can put the author of that quote, I would greatly appreciate it, Daniel. Thank you so much for your comment. Uh, do literally understand that when you tell men the only value a woman has is her looks, then you create broken homes where men have children with women and leave. And that's the thing. We tell that's a good point because that's one of the talking points, right? Again, one of those information pieces that you gotta really remove. Like that's, as Rebecca put it, that's one of the bones that you got to spit out. If a woman's, and women, this is, and I'm going to talk to you guys. If a man thinks that your value is solely based on your look, I can tell you with 100% certainty that as you get older, as you age, your looks will probably tend to fade. Okay. If your value is in your looks and you get older and your looks tend to fade, according to your husband's standard of on why he picked you in the first place, then you are no longer a value to him. You know what he's going to wind up doing? Finding somebody else who is a value. But here's the thing. When he does that, because he's listening to the advice of these YouTube mentors, he does that, you're going to want to take him to court for child support and alimony. Then he's going to be mad at you because he didn't hold up to his responsibility. <laughs> right? And then he's going to join that community and talk about how wretched and evil you are because you didn't let him go. And you didn't let him leave his responsibility. You didn't let him go and try to find a younger thing to, to ruin. Oh, boy. I could go in on this, but I won't. But I won't. Do men want beautiful women as wives? Absolutely. Is that wrong? Absolutely not. But men, stop choosing whether or not a woman is going to be a good wife based on how she looks. That's not why we marry. It's not. These guys don't like to be corrected, Proverbs 12.1. Many men don't, right? Many men don't. You should do one on women. I'm going, I, I, I should, I, I will, I will, <laughs> I will. I'm going to need um, my wife's advice on this one though, because I, again, like, I don't want to be that, that man telling women how they should be living. I can call out the men, but yeah. I'm trying to look for the comments. I don't understand. I don't know if I read this one. Dudes. Yeah, I did, I did read that one. Hold on. Oh, okay. Va oh, Valerie, we'll talk about that. Okay. You should do one on women. I will. Will you be going to do... Will you be going into what each of these individuals promote? Um, no, not today. I won't. I won't. This is just a, a general thing about understanding the difference between finding resources that could be helpful on YouTube and making these people your mentors on YouTube. A mentor is somebody who actually knows who you are and will ab and is able to, to really speak into your life and the areas that you need to grow in and be able to help you pivot and give you strategies that are individualistic to your needs and not just general talking points like many of us do here on YouTube. 
including myself. Okay. Yeah. So I won't be going into them individually. I did touch a little bit on, on a, a couple like Hafiz and mediocre tutorial and reviews and, but um, I won't be going into what they promote individually um, because I don't think that that's really my, my place. Um, Cause then I'll be going into uh, my opinions about each one individually. I don't really want to go there unless it's going to be promoting something positive about them. Mm, well, so we were making, uh, making having integrity and values common again. Yeah. Like why, why is that? We're living in a time where the bad has become good and the good has become bad. Like think about it, right? A man wants to get married. You are stupid for wanting to get married. All right. A woman who has a child out of wedlock on Instagram starts accessorizing the child and I'm not like judging anybody. Please. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Stop right there. Do not think that I'm like speaking negatively. All right. And if, and if I'm touching you, I'm not like negatively speaking about you. Just hear me out. Just the whole point about what's good is bad. All right. So a man who is, who wants to get married, right. is called stupid. Right. But we celebrate women who have children out of wedlock, especially on social media. Right. And call them, you know, strong, strong women. And come on, like we, we're living in a backward, backwards world where now good has become bad and the bad has become good. Right. Right. A man saying, listen, I'm not about to go and, and sleep with, a, a, you know, hundreds of women or tens of women before I find the right one. Not going to do it. We consider that man weak. All right. A woman who makes the same uh, commitment is a shrewd. We live in a backwards world now. It's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy. And nobody's perfect. Everybody slips up, right? But man, man. Uh, but he won't sign the paper. Date people based off of values. Date people based off of values, not looks. Look is a facade and an illusion. Satan is regarded as one of the most beautiful men in the world. And that placates to the idea that looks can be deceiving. As, as, as you said it, it's a facade, period. Facts, bro. All right, yeah, everybody shout. Yeah, yeah, I love the love in the chat, man. I love it. Also, we need to address how most men blame women for how hard dating is, but forget how they contributed for years doing women wrong. I seen it since grade school, how guys throw girls away, and now they're, hold on, hold on they're bitter. Yeah. Yeah. Again, how we, how we choose the women we date could, could be partially, uh, a result in, in how we date them. I'll give you a perfect example. And this may not be popular, but it, it definitely will weed out the one that you really shouldn't be considering. There are women who believe that they deserve certain types of treatment. I will say that, um, those type of women, men should not be dating. Um, but a, a woman who is just trying to get to know who a person is, is worth a man's time in getting to know. And where you take them on the first date could definitely be a filter in weeding out and filtering out the negative women who would only want you for what you can provide for them. But men don't think like that because we we essentially have bought into the 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 red pill, I mean the blue pill, right? Where we have to to impress a woman. If you have to impress a woman to win them, then you have already started on the path of a toxic relationship that's probably going to break your heart and lead you to joining the red pill community or the manosphere community. So we got to be be watchful. And again, many of us didn't have men that helped teach us this growing up. So now we're going into YouTube trying to find men tours to teach us this. And it's causing men to, to really be broken even more than they were before. Hey, Ron, yeah, Rona's in the building. What's going on, Rona? Uh, yeah, we, we read that one. Do you think men and women today suffer because when they do write things, they call simp and pick me's? I think so. They don't want to be labeled. I don't care what people think, though. Like, I think people have to get to the point where you should not care what people think about you. If you're trying to be um, the, the the best person that you can be, then be the person, the best person you can be. Um, like. We, 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 we care so much about what people think of us that we don't want to make the right decisions. You know, like, I remember, like growing up, 
um, I, I had people that were bad influences in my life, right? And um, I, I'm thankful that those very people, like the, the, you know, people that were killers, like, you know, spent time in jail for murder, they would go and do wrong things and they would say, Dre, we're about to, to go handle some business, go for a walk, right? Because they, they knew, like, they didn't want me in, in, involved with any of that stuff, right? And I think that um, it's rare that we have people like that in our life. And when you join a community of people who have been hurt, they're not concerned about what's best for you. They want you to, to, to join and stay and remain in that place of misery with them. So now when you want to do the right thing and you want to be a provider for a family, you're considered a simp. Stay away from those type of people, right? If you're a woman doing the right thing and you're, and, and you're practicing what Ruth practiced, right? To be able to be identified and seen by her Boaz, then you're considered a pick me. No, no, no. And we got to stop think, believing the hype and letting these people who have failed relationships living in their misery, trying to suck you into theirs. Taking my boy fishing. Have a. Yo, he's taking his boy fishing. Go ahead, bro. All right. I hope you guys catch a nice big. Uh, where, that, where, that, where that comment go? I missed it. Brother's taking his. Where is it? I wanted to highlight that one. All right. I missed it. When I get back down here, I'll I'll highlight that. One. Oh, here it is. He's taking his boy fishing. All right. So you go. Have, have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for joining the conversation. All right. Where are you? Modest women take work to earn. These men have no patience or realistic expectations for a good woman. They also think women don't exist. Oh, what a conundrum. So hopeless. And I think uh, I think there's, there's now, I, there's a lot of men like that, but there's a rise of men that's really trying to get it right. And, I, and, and there's a lot of men in, this, in, this com, in the comment section that, that are in that space, but they just want to get it right. So not every man um, thinks that way, but there's a lot that do. And I think that that as they become enlightened to what really is important, they're starting to leave those kind of spaces and and say, you know what, I don't need to, I can, I can take what I need from them, but I don't need to blindly follow these men on YouTube because doing that is causing havoc in my personal life and I can't do it no more. So uh, there's more and more men leaving those spaces. They don't know the difference. They try to treat all women the same. Mm hmm. What else we got? Turn the hands on. That quote is from. Hey, Valerie. Um, I think I have your number. I'm gonna give you a. a, a actually, I'm gonna send you an email. Um, I'm not sure if your email is the same, but I think I still have your number. I'm gonna reach out to you. Okay. I'm gonna reach out to you right after this. All right. All right. Oh, that quote is from that quote is from Atlas Shrugged by Ann. I say it about it. Thank you so much for that. All right. I'm going to try to look that up. Thank you so much, Rebecca. All right. All right. Misery. Misery loves company. If I'm a pick me for marrying my husband and being a happy housewife, so be it. And that's the thing. Are you happy? All right. And, and truth be told, you probably wasn't a Pick me, all right? All you did was put yourself in a situation to be seen. <clears throat> That's not really a pick me, is it? You put yourself in a, in a position to be seen, and a good man saw your qualities and was like, "That's what I want." Why is it that a woman who's doing the right thing is called a pick me, but the women on Instagram, half naked, showing everything and every everything to everybody, they're not considered a pick me. I like this chat. <laughs> I'm glad to see men and women here looking to heal and fix. And the reason why they go to these spaces is because they want that. They just don't know what it looks like. And I'm hoping that we can present that here. Uh, I show you a short. <laughs> yeah, her husband was like, yeah, I'm not even paying attention to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that short too. Hmm. They are talking about women should be submissive, but can never say about men to submit to God. Funny characters. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. Like, so if women are uh, going to submit to men, who are men submitting to? And I got a couple of scriptures for you guys. Oh, I've been on this thing for how long? How long I've been on this? It says, oh, an hour and 17 minutes. I was supposed to go mow the lawn. All right. I got to wrap up. I got to wrap up because I got stuff to do in the house. All right. Like, I still got to, like, fix my basement. Well, the, the my family room in the basement after the flood. So I got a lot that I have to do. Uh, uh, it's an interesting point. I want to make sure I get all the, the, the comments. Not only strong women, but strong single women. Um, well, honestly, most of them don't believe in God. Most of them don't, don't believe in God, but you're absolutely right, bruv. All right, bruv. Uh, Black exploitation. Are you from uh, London or England? We should be... We should be attracted to our partners. They don't have to be our ideal look. We should like looking at them. For, for real. Like you want to, you want to like yawn in the morning and turn over and, and open up your eyes and think, yo, I got a winner. Yeah. Like, it's like, he's so fun. I mean, your breath smells, just go brush your teeth, but come back and I, let me just let, let me just stare at you. Yeah. Like that's what you want. <laughs> I get it. All right. Hold on. I want to make sure I catch everybody. Well, honestly, most of them don't believe in God. Da, 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 looks like looks will always be part of attraction, but it shouldn't ever be the sole attraction or a relationship. Uh, will never make it. Looks fate, personality does not. And that's why I say like character is the most important thing in identifying if a person is going to be a good spouse, their relationship with God, how they treat people. All of that is vitally important in the decision making process. <clears throat> Rona Vlog says, I'm good, just busy doing my project. He he. I just opened my YouTube and see you live listening. Thank you so much. And she uh she's from Denmark. So we got people from Denmark in the chat. So thank you so much. Uh yes, sir. Unfortunately to submit to God first mentally, it's never talked about or taught. And if it's even hinted at, most people will clown you and call you weak. Yeah, because you're going to the source of strength, right? It's a very good topic. Oh, I, I see, uh, since I enjoy also listening to some motivational stuff or about happiness and marriage. Thank you. I read that one. All right, where are we at? Kind of off topic, but do you believe that if a guy nowadays approached a woman with flowers and a card to introduce himself, is that bad or not something to do since it's not 1950 anymore? Well, maybe some of the ladies in the chat could answer that, <laughs> right? Um, it's 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 difficult, right? It's difficult. Like that's back in the day, people used to do that. You share interest, and then you go to the family's house. You don't, you know, you go to the family's house with the card and and with flowers and stuff like that. And now you you hit somebody up in the DMs and say, "Hey, meet me at um so and so," you know, or or. You pull up to the house and you're texting them, I'm outside. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but maybe somebody in the chat. I, again, I don't think that's a bad thing to do. I think it's, you know, yeah, it's kind of kind of cute. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't think people do that anymore. You know, and I, I think the culture has changed to the point where I don't know if it's necessary. But it's good. If that's what you want to do, by all means. I asked that if a woman would uh, reciprocate that rightly, she could be the right type of woman to pursue possibly. But once a man see how she really is after giving the flowers. Mm, yeah. So again, it takes time to really get to know somebody. It really takes time. Um, yeah, but don't give me your number here. Okay. I'll find a way to reach out to you. I will find a way to reach out to you. I also think that another problem men have that turned them into so-called red pill content is that a lot of men don't really know how to approach and introduce themselves to a woman they're interested in. A lot of men don't. A lot of men don't. They have no clue how to spark up a conversation. And that's because a lot of people, a lot of men, they approach women because they're looking to get to know them intimately, sexually. They like what they look like, so let me go approach them. The thing is women realize that a lot of men will approach them because they look good. But if you approach a woman trying to get to know who they are, 
then you may have some success, especially today. Women are a little bit more wiser. And with women battling all kinds of content out there that tell them that they are the most important thing since sliced bread, which women are important. You're not the most important thing ever, but you are important. Then you got to be able to approach them in a way that is with that that you're not expecting anything, right? You just want to get to know who they are, and 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 find out a little bit about themselves without the, the the pressure of being somebody's boyfriend and girlfriend. That's it. I'm gonna have to close out soon though. A uh, good live, Dre. I'm going to catch up those football. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead, bro. I'm about to end it now too. I right, have a great day, bro. Uh, moments with Mickey Red. <laughs> What's up? Okay. Uh, my little man. <clears throat> that is not what I clicked. I say the date for the six if you can make it there. What's happening on the six? My little man is bringing back flowers. LOL. <laughs> my, my man is bringing back flowers, right? Yeah, honestly, man. You might find some women that find that very attractive, but they might be very rare. They kind uh, That kind of chivalry is considered boring. And yeah, I think that's that's true. Yeah, I think some women definitely think that. But again, if you get to know who the person is, you'll know for sure. I'll tell you where it does work. Let's say if you have a coworker, and I'm not here um, promoting um, that, you know, like, you know, uh, people like just, you know, dating casually coworkers. But if there's a coworker that you're interested in and you are... Um, uh, in a, a space where, you know, she's single, you know, give her flowers and a car say, Hey, you know, I just wanted to, to, to hope, ho hopefully brighten your day. Um, hopefully these uh, flowers will put a smile on your face and I hope you have a wonderful day. That's it. Right. That kind of thing will probably grab their attention quick, but yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, nice stream. It's been lovely. Nice chat. As well with the people. Thank you so much for being here and joining the conversation. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for answering my question. You're welcome. You're welcome. Take care, Dre. Uh, thank you so much, Gordon Desert. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. You should do a video on how to approach, introduce, and make conversations and a real connection with somebody. I would, and I wouldn't make a video about making uh, connections with somebody of the opposite sex. Just about how how to engage conversation with people in general, because. I think that will lead to relationships and then um, the relationship will take on the course that it's meant to take. So, yeah, I can do that. All right. All right. So, guys, I am going to call it a day. No no, no more comments because I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to read it. But before I do that, I need to read these scriptures. All right. So hopefully a couple of scriptures that will help you guys out. Okay. Uh, First Peter 5, 1 through 5 reads, so I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, as well as a partake in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you. I mean, like mentor them, teach them, guide them, lead them. Exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain not charging people an uh, astronomical amount of money to be their mentor, but eagerly, not domineering, telling women that they're all kinds of nasty names or telling men that their hind parts are not big enough to be worth anything. Not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, that's Christ, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I'm not done. Got a couple more scriptures for you that will help you out. Next, Proverbs 9.9. 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. Another one. Proverbs 19, 21, 20, 21. Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Many are the plans of the man, of, in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. 
All right. And lastly, which I, I one of my, my favorite scriptures, first Corinthians, here we have Paul, right? Writing to the church of Corinth. He says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. So as Paul is following Christ, he's telling his people, follow him. Okay. Be the example. Stop adopting mentors in your life who first don't know who you are. Second, not seeking to have a deeper relationship with God. Third, have not shown success in the area that you need to grow in. The reason why you want to mentor them, them to mentor you in the first place. Okay. Be cautious. Okay. Just because they have a million subscribers, 500 subscribers on YouTube, doesn't mean that they're going to be good mentors to you. It does not. Okay. You, they can have valuable information for you, but it may not qualify them to have the the carving knife, the chisel, and the hammer to make the corrections necessary for you to be where you need to be. So with that being said, this is Harrison Family Vlogs. I am Dre. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the conversation and joining to the Super Chatters. Um, I think it was Gordon and Rebecca. Thank you guys so much. I think I hope I think it was them. I think, is there a way for me to find out? I have no clue. All right. Well, either way, thank you to those who super chatted. And if you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so it will let you know when I upload new videos and when I go live like I did today. Hit the like button. If you like the button, like like the video, right? Hit the, if you like the button. If you press the like button and like the video, the YouTube algorithm will say, hey, this is worth sharing to other people. So please hit the like button and share the video out too if you can. And uh, again, I really appreciate everybody for joining the conversation. And listen, know the difference between whether or not someone will be a good resource, a valuable resource, and a good mentor. If you're watching somebody on YouTube, I don't care who it is. They can give you the most positive information. It could be me. They're not your mentors. They're just giving you valuable information to help improve an area of your life. Okay? And it may not necessarily be canon or, um, you know, it could be just uh, something that may work for individuals or uh, some people. But you need somebody in your life that will help mentor you. Somebody that knows who you are. You're not going to find that from your favorite YouTuber at this moment. So, know the difference. And I'm not saying stop listening to these YouTubers. I'm saying you can listen to them. But you need a mentor in your life, a couple mentors in your life, so you can grow in the areas you need to grow in. All right? And you need Jesus. <laughs> the ultimate mentor of all mentors, period. All right? The man's man. I said it. The man's man. All right, guys. Everybody have a good day. God bless. I'm about to go mow some lawns and clean up my basement. But until the next upload and live stream, I am out. Peace.